think what makes connected learning unique within the spectrum of possibilities is that connected learning isn't about a particular platform, technology, or a technique, but it's really an approach to learning. Um, it's an approach to trying to understand how learning operates that's fairly agnostic as to the technique or platform, but really is about what is the experience for the learner? What does the learning look like? And then from there you can say, oh, we could use open resources, we could use a flipped approach, we could bring in schools, museums. It's agnostic as to the technique, the institution, uh, but it's really about saying for each learner, uh, there is a kind of experience that is optimal from a learning perspective and that is keyed to what it means to really thrive and grow up in a digital and networked age. I think right now we're at a critical historical moment for an approach to learning that is about social connectivity, that's about exploration, discovery, inquiry-based learning that's driven by real-world problems tied to young people's interests and identities. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous opportunity in today's networked world around social connectivity, the ability to mobilize relationships and communities and causes, as well as the open ecosystem of information and knowledge exchange. This is an unprecedented opportunity. Uh, in a lot of ways, the learning philosophy is something that has been around for a long time in progressive education, the idea of connecting learning to real-world engagement, about having porous boundaries between the classroom and the community and the home. These ideas of learning and what makes good learning is not new. It's just that we've been handed these tools to suddenly make these forms of progressive, empowered, inquiry-based learning accessible in a much more broad-based way. We're seeing a widening gap between the pri privileged and less privileged young people and families. So in the period from the 70s to the 2000s, we've seen an escalation of expenditures uh, in wealthy households for enrichment and learning type activities, where those from less privileged households have basically seen sort of a, a stable and low amount of expenditure. So what's happening uh, is that Families who are uh, highly educated and wealthy recognize that uh, learning that's focused on interests and enrichment, out-of-school learning, learning that makes productive use of new technologies, that these are the ways that kids are really getting ahead, becoming sort of top-tier learners. Uh, and they're going outside of our public infrastructures, whether that's the school or the library, in order to uh, access, pay for, gain um, these, this additional advantage. And the tragic thing is that this uh, differentiation, this inequity is expanding at a period when the technology actually allows much broader access, that there's nothing from a resourcing point of view that isn't, uh, that is keeping kids from accessing these opportunities online, but young people don't have the institutional, uh, the social uh, and the educational supports necessarily define those opportunities. So it's really a question of a failure of will rather than resources. And that's where I think we really will only have ourselves to blame if we don't take hold of this opportunity.